Welcome back guys. Today I'll be doing trigonometry. I'll be looking at the compound angle identities where I will be explaining the exact value that we can get using the compound formula. So here we're going to do the compound formula. We have cos A plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B where A and B represent angles. Cos A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Sine A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Sine A minus B is equal to sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. Now tan A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B all over one minus tan A tan B. And we have here tan A minus B is equal to tan A minus tan B all over one plus tan A tan B. Also, we need to be familiar. Sine zero is zero while cos zero is one, tan zero is zero. Sine 30, which is the same thing as pi over six, is a half. Cos 30, which is the same as cos pi over six, is root three over two. And tan 30 or tan pi over six is the same thing as root three over three. And uh, root three over three is the same thing as one over root three. Sine 45, which is pi over four, is root two over two. Cos 45, which is the same as cos pi over four, is root two over two, but root two over two is the same thing as one over root two. And tan, 45 or tan pi over 4 is the same thing as 1. Sine 60 or pi over 3, sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And cos 60 or pi over 3 is the same thing as a half. And tan 60, which is tan pi over 3, is root 3. Sine 90, which is pi over 2, so sine pi over 2 is 1. And the cos of 90, which is the same as cos pi over 2, is 0. But when you do the tan of 90 or pi over 2, we will get math error. Here I need to find the exact value of sine 105. So since you say the exact value, I cannot get the approximation. So I need a fraction that is equivalent to this. Now, I will express sine 105 as two functions. So I will find which two angles can add to give me 105 or subtract to give me 105. Looking at this, if I add 45 plus 60, that will give me 105. So I can rewrite this as sine 60 plus 45. Now, there is a component angle that says that when you add two angles, let's go back to this. When we add two angles, it is the same as sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. So just to pull this to the, the slide, so we have this to illustrate what exactly I'm saying. So this means that A is 60 and B is 45. So substituting, I'll have sine 60 cos 45 plus cos 60 sine 45. 
Now from the table, I know sine 60. Sine 60 is root three over two. So I'm gonna replace this as root three over two. So we have cos 45, this is the row, would be root two over two, or some persons will say one over root two. I'm going to use root two over two. So I'll have times root two over two plus cos 60. So cos 60 is a half. So I'm going to have one over two here times sine 45, that's root two over two, or some persons say one over root two. Now multiplying this root three times root two from thirds, you write the root and three times two, that's six, and the two times two, that's four. Plus one times root two, that gives you root two, and two times two, that's four. Then we add root six plus root two, that's root six plus root two over four. And that's it. Now, tan minus 15 is the same thing as, so we can go to, this, this, the quadrant, minus 15 would start in a clockwise direction. So it means 15 will be here. And this is the angle that forms. So this is 15. So I'm expecting when you find a tan of 15 because it's a cast diagram. It's not falling in the region where it will be positive. So when you find the tan, the answer will be negative. So what is what we can do, we can find the exact value by using the compound formula tan and think of which two angle, when I subtract, I will be getting minus 15. Oh, we need a negative number. So it means I am going to use 45 and 30. Oh, 45 and 30, if I say 30 minus 45, no. So what I will go about doing here, is writing that as a compound formula. So I'll have, go to my list of compound formula and see because I have subtraction, this is the one I'll use. So tan A minus B is equal to tan A minus tan B all over one plus tan A tan B. So right here, I am going to have this as tan. Now A is the first one, so A is 30. So I'm going to have tan 30 minus B is the second one. So I'm going to have tan 45 all over one plus, because there's a plus in the formula. So a plus in the denominator, then tan A, tan B. So I will have tan 30 and then I'll have tan 45. No. Tan 30, tan 30 is root three over three. So I'm gonna write this as root three over three, and then tan 45, so this is a tan column, and 45 would be here, so tan 45 is one. In the denominator, I'll have one plus tan 30, remember it's one times, tan 45, so that's root three over three. 
Now I'm going to separate the numerator and the denominator. So this is my numerator and this is my denominator. For my numerator, I'm going to have 1 over 1 and then find the LCM. The LCM is 3. So 3 into 3 goes 1 times, so 1 times root 3, that gives me root 3. And then 1 into 3 goes 3 times, so 3 times 1, that's 3. So I have root 3 minus 3 over 3. So that's the numerator. For the denominator, 1 times root 3 over 3, that would just give me root 3 over 3. So I can forget about this. 1, so I'll just have 1 plus. Because so 1 times the root 3 over 3 just gives you back root 3 over 3. Put this over 1 and find the LCM, which is 3. 1 into 3 goes 3 times, so 3 times 1, that's 3. And 3 into 3 goes 1 times, so 1 times root 3, that's root 3. And this is a denominator. Now I'll be joining them together. So I have a numerator, which is root 3 minus 3 all over 3. Then I'll put a line, but instead of a line, I'm going to put division. And then I have 3 plus root 3 over 3. Division, I can change it to multiplication and reciprocate. So I can have root 3 minus 3 over 3 times, flipping this, so we have 3 over 3 plus root 3. This cancel, so my answer is equal to root 3 minus 3 over 3 plus root 3. But by right, we can continue further. If this question had said it doesn't want a third in the denominator or it wants a, an integer in the denominator, once that, then I would have to rationalize this where I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate, which is 3 minus root 3. But for here, I'm just going to leave it as is. Other identities that we need to know is that cosec theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Sec theta is 1 over cos theta. Cut theta is equal to 1 over tan theta. Cos square theta plus sine square theta, that's 1. Sec square theta is equal to 1 plus tan square theta. Sec square theta is equal to 1 plus cut square theta. Sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta, cos 2 theta is equal to cos square theta minus sine square theta, and cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine square theta, or 2 cos square theta minus 1. Tan 2 theta is equal to 2 tan theta over 1 minus 2 tan square theta. Also, tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, and cot theta is cos theta over sine theta, and some persons know it as one over tan theta. So if I'm going to solve a trigonometric function, let's look at it. It says if theta is an acute angle. So if it's an acute angle and cos theta is equal to 45, so this would be the triangle. This is theta. And remember, acute angle is between 0 and 90. So that's why it's in the first quadrant. Now, we're given that cos theta is 4 over 5. We know, remember, Sokatoa. This means sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So here they give us cos theta, so that means the four represents the adjacent and the five represents the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is five, 
the adjacent is four and I can find the opposite using Pythagoras theorem. We know for a right angle triangle, it is five square is equal to four square plus the opposite square, which is gonna be eight. Five square, that's 25. Four square is 16, and I'm carrying it over, so it becomes minus 16 equal a square. A represents the unknown, which is the opposite side. And I just use random e. So you can use any letter. 25 minus 16, that's nine. So I have a square equal nine or nine equal a square. Then I square root both sides, but I can't use plus or minus three because the triangle is on the positive side. So that means the value is going to be positive because here the y axis is above you know, it is a positive value. So that's why it's gonna be positive. And also it's on the side that the first quadrant, all the values are positive. So the question is, so I find the value of sine theta. So sine theta is equal to opposite over at hypotenuse. So it's going to be three over five and then tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is three and the adjacent is four. And that's it. Here we're going to solve the following, given that tan B equal negative a half, where B is an obtuse angle, find the value of cos B and sine B without the use of calculator. Now here it states that it's an obtuse angle. So it means it falls in the second quadrant. So all of this will represent B. Now we have to use Sokator. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent. However, we cannot use this. This part is not a right angle triangle. But over to my left, we're able to create a right angle triangle. So this is my right angle triangle. So let's call this B complement, which will be a reference angle. And remember when you have your reference angle, if I, based on the second quadrant, we know that sin is the only one that gives us positive. So cos, if B was cos 150, then the reference angle would be minus, we'd have to minus cos. B complement in this case will be 30. So since it's 30, I would have to have cos 150 is equal to minus cos 30. If I had tan, you know, tan, because we have tan B, that means that the negative of tan 30, so if B was 150, tan 150 is the same as negative tan 30. Now, what happened is that whatever the triangle has on its side is equivalent to the original equation, because we say it's equal. So we have a right angle triangle, and the information that's given is that the opposite, I'm gonna forget about the sign for now. The opposite side is one and the adjacent side is two. So I know this is opposite of B complement, so it would be one and the adjacent side will be two. Now we have to figure out now, you know, which one would be negative. This cannot be negative because it's parallel to the Y axis. So it means that this is a positive one but this is on the negative x-axis side. So this will be negative. The only thing I need to find now is the hypotenuse. So finding the hypotenuse, I will have to have the hypotenuse square is equal to the adjacent being square plus 
the opposite being square. So I have the hypotenuse square is equal to minus two square, that's four, plus one square, that's one. So four plus one, that's five. So I have eight square is equal to five. And then I square root both sides. So h is equal to root five. Now that I have the hypotenuse, I can now answer the question, cos b. B complement is the same thing as what we would have gotten for cos b. Both of them will give us the same answer. So here, cos b is equal to the adjacent, which is minus two over the hypotenuse, which is root five. If I'm looking for a sine b, sine b is equal to, it will be opposite. So the opposite side will be one over the hypotenuse, which is root five. And that will be the answer. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.